I'm so honored to being invited to this important event in Lithuanian Parliament. Uh, I would love to be there in the wonderful city of uh, Vilnius with you. But it's not possible. I would just love to interact directly with the members of the parliament as well as with the experts. Unfortunately, I cannot do it. <laughs> so I will try to do my best. I am also happy just uh, to present the Czech experience after uh, what I've heard uh, from Aliona about the Estonian experience, because the Czech experience is very similar. I am all the time absolutely fascinated looking at the data showing that the good public health oriented drug policy is saving lives of people. It was amazing to see the drops from 170 to 25 or 26 in just 10 years of evolving uh, uh, public health oriented uh, policy in Estonia, just congratulations. Uh, as a former drug czar in the Czech Republic and also as a former MP who has uh, successfully pushed uh, through the Czech parliament several drug related laws, I am aware of the importance of uh, information exchange and uh, of the advantage of sharing the best practices on such a complex issue as the drug policy is. Serving uh, as a physician and also as a politician, my professional life searching how to prevent problematic drug use among general population and how to help those being addicted to psychoactive substances, but also how to organize public health and public safety aspects of effective drug policies, including law enforcement, justice and order, as well as health, social and education sectors. As a former mayor of Prague, I had a great opportunity to implement effective drug policy also at the local city level. So, what is the Czech experience as far as an effective drug policy is concerned? Well, in the Czech Republic, similarly to all post-Soviet countries in uh, Central and Eastern Europe, during the communist era, possession of any drug was considered a criminal offense and was classified under the same provision as the unlawful manufacturing import export supply. With the transition to democracy after the Velvet Revolution in 1989, broader changes were made to the criminal law. After the Velvet Revolution and the breakdown of uh, Iron Curtain, uh, our country has undergone, uh, as in other countries of the region, a profound transition. As a drug czar, I was aware of the fact that the drug-free world is a product of wishful thinking and is an unachievable goal derived from the disastrous effects of the 50 years war on drugs. We defined our drug policy goals focused at reduction of health and social harms caused by drugs, but as well as health and social harms caused by misguided drug policies. Absolute prerequisite for that was decriminalization effective from July 1990. Any possession of illegal drug for personal use was decriminalized, removed from the criminal code and regarded as an administrative minor offense. Such removal of criminal sanctions for personal drug possession fits well into how decriminalization has been defined. However, drug possession for the purpose of distribution to another person remained a criminal offense. So the former Czechoslovakia was the first country probably, as I remember, in Europe decriminalization, decriminalizing uh, illicit drug possession and illicit drug use. The key person behind the scene was the first Czechoslovak and later Czech president Václav Havel. I should add that uh, 
the decriminalization is extremely important, taking seriously in account the legal framework. But as well as important, at least in the Czech Republic, was the uh, introduction of a balanced and inter integrated drug policy policies involving also harm reduction strategies. As uh, my colleague from, Ali uh, from uh, Estonia, uh, Madame Aliona uh, already said, uh, crucially important for the good policy effects were uh, needle exchange schemes, outreach services, treatment, including uh, opioid substitution treatment programs. And at the same time, guarantee of a long-term financial sustainability and also guarantee of the evidence-based medicine principle involved in the policy. That means cost-benefit approach. So the decriminalization uh, really crucially in, in, with the involvement of the first Czechoslovak president, Václav Havel, was based on the recodification of penal code. Uh, such a recodification, uh, in fact, uh, was uh, introducing the public health and social angle of the problem solving, the drug uh, problems, drug related problems. But uh, as we know, the public, the media, but uh, also we as a politicians are extremely sensitive to changes uh, on the drug scene. So uh, even that time as still a drug czar, I was confronted with the increasing pressure to harshen drug policy uh, in order to reverse the decriminalization in response to emerging open drug scene. The Czech Republic uh, was at uh, the beginning of 90s, the transit country, but in the late 90s, it was a uh, consumer country. So we really had a troubles with the open drug scene. And certainly there was uh, a guilt on the side of a so-called legal framework. So, in fact, after two years of uh, pressure, and as a result, actually, of a uh, certain compromise solution, a new penal code was introduced and uh, criminal offense of personal drug possession in a greater than small amount applic applicable since 1999. So, I am sometimes labeling this period as a so-called cowboy time, because uh, personally I was uh, really uh, very much under the pressure from uh, the office of the prime minister and from uh, the cabinet, uh, from uh, the members of the parliament. And the result is the definition small amount or greater amount than small, as a threshold between a minor offenses or administrative offenses and criminal offenses. A threshold was introduced with zero definition. What does that mean? So possession of a small amount for personal use still remained as an administrative offense. So it's interesting because uh, at the beginning of the millennium, uh, while Czech Republic partially recriminalized, uh, not in the right sense, but uh, partially, for example, Portugal, as we will probably hear in a couple of uh, minutes, decriminalized at the same time. Until 2010, only internal guidelines for the police and the public prosecutors were av available in the decision as to what a greater or small amount of a drug was. And the courts were obliged to consider all the circumstances of the offense. Change of the law was immediately followed by the scientific project named Impact Cost and Benefit Analysis of the New Drug Legislation. 
The project was uh, supervised by uh, prestigious uh, international organizations and universities and was really scientifically based, included uh, five big project studies uh, and uh, 26 sub-studies. And it's really interesting that after three years, we had outcomes, data, scientific data from the project. And these data showed clearly that the recriminalization or partial recriminalization has shown zero objectively measure, measurable success. Looking, for example, at the cannabis use, cumulative starting probabilities, here you see that even though the law was harsh, still the overall prevalence of cannabis use was decreasing. This is not only the experience from the Czech Republic, but we see that from many countries. You can see in this picture, harshening the law on one side, and what are the effects on the prevalence of use? Because one would expect that if there is a harsh law, there must be a positive impact on the illicit substance use, but this is not true. In fact, we can ask the question as a politicians, when we change the drug law, there are expectations or maybe threats. For example, after decriminalization, we could expect that the number of people using drugs and the harm associated with the drug use will increase, or that the decriminalization is sending a wrong message to the general public, that drug use is something normal. In reality, uh, in the Czech Republic at least, we have proved that this is not the case. So in next couple of years, based also on this scientifically proved experience, a new penal code was adopted in the Czech Republic uh, with greater focus on a formal or written rather than material concept of the criminal law regarding drug crimes. There were minor modifications with aimed to distinguish between different type of drugs. Here you can see some of the thresholds, uh, thresholds uh, defined uh, first by the Supreme Court, then by the government and also uh, the uh, Czech uh, parliament. Well, what are the long term outcomes uh, based on the Czech experience? We can look at the costs and harms on one side or benefits on the other side. One would expect that the guided drug policies are effective in long run, pragmatic, evidence-based, and bringing the positive outcomes. Misguided drug policies, certainly not, uh, because uh, as we know, and as uh, Professor Kazachkin already stated, uh, these misguided drug policies are driving the HIV and ACV epidemics, mortality, morbidity, public violence, uh, in incarceration rates, uh, etc. So if you look at the experience in my country, we see that the in the long run, uh, we have really very, very preferable prevalences and incidences of overdoses, again, showing the same outcomes as what uh, is experienced in Estonia. In the long run, we see extremely low HIV seroprevalence among injecting drug users and the overall morbidity. So lesson learned in the Czech Republic in the last 30 years is that the pragmatic and human policy policies really works. And uh, reducing HIV prevalence among uh, person who, persons who inject drugs 
reducing HCV prevalence among uh, those, reducing hidden population of uh, people who used and inject drugs. Actually, at the beginning of the story, 80% of uh, drug users were not in contact with health and social care facilities. At the end, it's just opposite. We have 80% of uh, injecting users and drug users who are in contact with health and social care facilities. We see the reducing mortality. We see the overall morbidity decreasing. Uh, we also can transfer these facts into economic perspective, showing that it's uh, these public health oriented pragmatic drug policies are just uh, reducing, uh, decreasing the overall social and economic costs. What are the vehicles? And uh, I'm just going to the end. The major vehicle for the success, according to my opinion, is decriminalization. It's also important to uh, understand the best practice or good practice once you introduce a specialized uh, treatment and low threshold and rehab programs. Uh, it's important uh, to educate uh, the, certainly uh, general public users, but also uh, through media and through other venues, uh, the politicians, decision makers, public administrators. It's important to base the policy on data. So science, evidence-based medicine. And it's important to think about uh, how much does it cost? That means uh, it should be economic driven policy, especially in countries uh, of uh, the region, including the Czech Republic. It's important to prove that there is an active leadership. Well, what even in the Czech Republic is still remaining as a problem, even though Václav Havel tried really to deconstruct that, this stigma still here. Uh, we still very often look at drug users as to somebody who does not belong to our culture, but drug users and persons who in inject drugs are our sons and daughters, our brothers, sisters, sometimes even parents. Michel Kazachkin uh, once quoted uh, Kofi Annan, the former UN secretary and also the honorable member, former uh, honorable member of the Global Commission on Drug Policy. I will just find another very simple but very true sentence. Criminal record is much bigger threat to individual as well as to society than occasional use of drugs. So finally, as we know that looking at the proportion of incarcerated people for drug possession without intent to supply in many countries in the region, the figures are extremely high. Even in the Czech Republic, which has decriminalized in 1990, 30 years ago, still the challenge of uh, effective public health policy oriented implementation is still here because this is what we have found three years ago in the prison. It's just uh, self-made uh, injection for a drug application into your veins found in, seized in prison, just absolutely crazy. So recommendations. Number one, public health angle as a priority, including harm reduction, decriminalization of drug use and drug possession, as well as proportionality in sentencing. Three, universal accessibility to essential medicines. Four, destigmatization, person who use drugs. Five, law enforcement priority should be aimed at higher levels of organized crime. The new paradigm 
in front of us in the Czech Republic is how should we regulate drug markets that, not, that does not mean legalization per se. And the other, as, uh, well, I don't have time for that, but <laughs> the regulation of criminal markets and the regulation of illegal markets, I'm now talking about alcohol, for example, and tobacco. This is a big challenge uh, for the public health policy linked to uh, addiction in general. Finally, integrated drug policies, including alcohol, tobacco, not only illicit drugs, and including also gambling and technical games. It's a big challenge for the Czech Republic. And just to prove it, for example, looking at the risk factors related to health according to Lancet, well, we see this that shows that tobacco is number two, alcohol is number five, but illicit, so-called illicit drugs, number 19. So as we know, opportunities and risks stay very close together, but I wish all the best to Litvini attempt and I keep my fingers for humanizing drug policies and to decriminalize possession of illicit substances for personal use. Thank you very much for your attention.